Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's five weeks to go into your GCSE Maths exam, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really well. So as I said, there's five weeks, or 35 days to go, and today we're going to focus on the topic of relative frequency and experimental probability. So in this video, we're going to focus on that probability topic of relative frequency, and in this video, we're going to go through how to answer relative frequency questions. There'll be some for you to try yourself, and then also there's the practice questions in the link below. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at relative frequency. So here we've got a question. It says the dice is rolled 40 times and it lands on a 5 15 times. Write down the relative frequency of the dice landing on a 5. Now, if you think you know how to try this one, feel free to press pause and write down the relative frequency of the dice landing on a 5. Alternatively, in a second, I'll just go through it. Okay, so the dice was rolled 40 times and it lands on a 5 15 times. So the relative frequency of a 5 would be 15 fortieths because it lands on a 5 15 times out of the 40 times it was rolled. So the relative frequency of the dice landed on a 5 is 15 fortieths, and that's it. Now we weren't asked to cancel this down, but if you did cancel it down, both of these numbers are divisible by 5, so that would give us 3 ifs. So the relative frequency of a 5 is 15 fortieths or 3 ifs, and that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, now let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says a coin is thrown 50 times and it lands on tails 27 times. Write down the relative frequency of the coin landed on a head. So feel free to press pause and try this question now yourself. Okay, so if the coin's thrown 50 times and it lands on tails 27 times, that must mean it must land on heads. So it lands on heads 23 times, 23 times. Because obviously if it lands on tails 27 times, the rest of the times must be heads. So we want to find the relative frequency of the coin landed on heads. Well, it lands on heads 23 out of the 50 times, so it's 23 fiftieths, 23 out of the 50, and that's it. So the relative frequency of the coin landing on a head would be 23 fiftieths, and that's it, because it's 23 out of 50, and we just, and this can't be cancelled down, so we're done. And that's it, so if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've been given a table, and we're told Katie rolls a dice 100 times, and the table shows her results. So it lands on a 1, 22 times, a 2, 9 times, a 3, 14 times, a 4, 31 times, a 5, 19 times, and a 6, 5 times. And the question says, write down the relative frequency of the dice landing on an odd number. And feel free to press pause and to work out the relative frequency of this dice landing on an odd number. Okay, so we know it's rolled 100 times, so we can put 100 on the denominator to begin with. And now we just need to see how many times it lands on an odd number. So an odd number, that would be 1, 3, and 5. So let's add together 22, 14, and 19. And that would be how many times this dice landed on an odd number. So whenever we do 22 plus 14 plus 19, that's equal to 55. So that means the relative frequency of the dice landed on an odd number will be 55 one hundredths. And that's it. Now, if we want to, we could cancel this down. Both of these numbers are divisible by 5. And if we divide both of these numbers by 5, we would get 11 twentieths, and that's it. And so the relative frequency of the dice landing on an odd number would be 11 twentieths, or 55 one hundredths, and that's it. So we just find out how many times it landed on an odd number, which is 55 times, out of the 100 times it was rolled, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, a spinner is spun 800 times, and the table tells us the relative frequency of the four colours. So obviously this spinner can land on a white, a black, a red, or an orange, and we've got the relative frequencies for each of them. And we want to find out how many times the spinner lands on each color. So if you multiply the number of trials, that's the number of times that something is done, an experiment or something's carried out. So in this case, the spinner spun 800 times. So if you multiply that 800 by each of the relative frequencies, that'll tell us how many times it landed on each of the colors. So for instance, for white, we would take our 0.25, the relative frequency of it landing on a white, 0.25 or a quarter, and we'd multiply that by 800. And whenever we work that out, 0.25 times 800, that's equal to 200. So that means it landed on white 200 times. And we can check our answer 200 out of the 800 is 200 eight hundredths and if you cancel it down you get a quarter which is 0.25 so that's the relative frequency so to find out how many times it lands in each color what you need to do is to multiply the relative frequencies by the number of times the experiment took place which is 800 okay so feel free to press pause now and work out how many times the spinner landed on black on red and on orange so in terms of how many times it landed on black, we would take our 0.4, the relative frequency of it landed on black, we'd multiply that by 800, how many times the experiment took place, and we're going to do 0.4 times 800 is equal to 320. So we've done white and we've done black. In terms of red, the relative frequency of the spinner landed on red is 0.2. We're going to multiply that by 800. That's equal to 160. So it landed on red 160 times. And finally, orange. 
we take the relative frequency of orange, which is 0.15, and we multiply that by 800, and that's equal to 120. So it landed on orange 120 times. We can check our answer if we just add together 200 and 320, that's 520, and another 160, that's equal to 680, and another 120 is equal to 800. So they add up together to be 800, which is what we were looking for, the number of times the experiment took place. And that's it, and if you got that, well done. Okay, and let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Martin and Laura are trying to estimate how many green jelly beans are in a tub of 600 jelly beans. So there's a big tub of 600 jelly beans, and Martin and Laura are trying to work out an estimate of how many green jelly beans are in that tub of 600 jelly beans. So what Martin does is he takes out 30 jelly beans. So he takes out one at a time, looks at it, and puts it back in. So he take, does that 30 times. So I'm guessing he's picking them at random. So he takes out 30 jelly beans, one at a time. He looks at it and puts it back. Takes another one, looks at it, puts it back. Takes another one, looks at it, puts it back. And he does that 30 times, and he gets four green jelly beans. Laura does it 150 times, so she takes out a jelly bean, looks at it, puts it back, mixes them up, takes another one at random, looks at it, puts it back, mixes them up, and so on. And she does that 150 times, and she gets 12 green jelly beans. And the first question says, write down the relative frequency of Martin taking a green jelly bean. Well, if we have a look at this, Martin done 30 trials, so he done 30 trials, and four of them are green, so the relative frequency of him picking a green would be four thirtieths. So that's the relative frequency of him picking a green jelly bean, four thirtieths, four out of the 30 times he done the experiment. And we can cancel that down if we want to. We can divide both of those by two, and that would be equal to two fifteenths. So that means that the relative frequency of Martin taking a green jelly bean is two fifteenths. Okay, so that's our first part done. Okay, next part. The next part says write down the relative frequency of Laura taking a green jelly bean. Well, she done the experiment 150 times, and she got 12 green jelly beans, so that's 12 out of 150. So the relative frequency of Laura taking a green jelly bean would be 12 150ths. Now that can be cancelled down. If we divide both of these by six, we get that's equal to 2 25ths, and that means the relative frequency of Laura taking a green jelly bean is 2 25ths. Okay, and that's it. So just the number of successes over the number of trials. Okay, the next question says, whose experiment gives the most accurate estimate for the number of green jelly beans in the tub? Well, well Laura done the experiment the most times. She done 150 times. She done 150 trials, whereas Martin only done 30 trials. So her experiment would be more accurate because she done it more times. So let's write that down. And that's it. I just said Laura's estimate would be more accurate as she carried out more trials, or she carried out the experiment more times. Okay, next. Okay, the next part then says, estimate how many green jelly beans are in the tub. So let's go back and look at our answers. So in terms of Martin, he done the experiment 30 times and he found that four of them were green. So he's got four thirtieths or two fifteenths of the jelly beans would be green. But Laura's is more accurate because she'd done the experiment more times, so we're going to use her relative frequency instead. He, she'd done the experiment 150 times, and she found that 12 of them were green. So she found that 12 150ths of the jelly beans are green. Or if you cancel that down, that's 2 25ths. So her estimate is that 2 25ths of the jelly beans are green. So if we work out 2 25ths of the number of jelly beans in the tub, that'll be our estimate for how many green jelly beans are in the tub. So we need to work out 2 25ths of 600. So let's do that. So we're going to take our 600. We're going to divide by the bottom, which is 25. So how many 25s are we going to 600? Well, 25, 50, 75, 100. There's 4 and 100. The 600, so that's going to be 6 lots of 4, is 24. So whenever we divide 600 by 25, that's equal to 24. We now need to multiply by the top, because obviously if we want to work out 2 25ths of something, we divide by the bottom and times by the top. So we take our 24, and we then times by 2, and that's equal to 48. So our estimate for how many green jelly beans are in the tub would be 48. So our estimate for the number of green jelly beans in the tub would be 48. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Now, whenever we're dealing with relative frequency questions, these types of graphs are quite popular. So in terms of this situation, so I'm going to give you a bit of a situation to begin with. So there's a bag of sweets. There's a bag of sweets here. So a bag of sweets. And there's loads and loads of sweets in the bag. And what's happening is someone's taking a sweet out, looking at it, looking at the colour, and then putting it back in. Taking a sweet out at random, looking at it, noting the colour, and putting it back in. And they're looking for blue sweets. So they're saying whenever they take out a blue sweet, then that's a success. They found a blue sweet. Okay, so we've got relative frequency, and we've got the number of trials going across horizontally. And these are quite popular with relative frequency questions. And if we have a look here, whenever it's carried out 20 times, so after 20 trials, there's a relative frequency of getting a blue sweet is 0.5. So whenever this is carried out 20 times, because the relative frequency is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 20 would be equal to 10. So that means that whenever the sweets are taken out 20 times, 10 of them are blue, and so on. And then we're told, in the first 40 trials, 12 blue sweets are selected to plot this result on the graph. So 12 blue sweets are selected. So that means there's 12 
out of 40. So that's the relative frequency of getting a blue sweet after 40 trials. So if we do 12 divided by 40, that's equal to 0.3. So the relative frequency of a blue sweet after 40 trials would be 0.3. So if we go 40 and up to 0.3, that would be there. So, so that's that point there, 40 across and 0.3 up. Okay, so we've done our first part where we've plotted that relative frequency on the graph. Okay, let's look at our next part. So the next part says how many blue sweets were selected after 100 trials. So have a look at the graph now. Press pause and work out how many times blue sweets were selected after 100 trials. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take the relative frequency, which if we look at 100 trials is 0.4, and we're going to multiply that by the number of trials, so how many times the experiment was carried out, which is 100. And if we do 0.4 multiplied by 100, that's equal to 40. So that means there was 40 blue sweets taken out after 100 trials, and if you got that, well done. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through relative frequency. That's one of those topics where we're not entirely sure what context or situation might be used by the examiner. So I highly recommend the practice questions today. So in the description below, there's the practice questions on relative frequency, and hopefully you'll find those useful. Now, as I said earlier, this five weeks of going to a GCC Maths exam, keep up the hard work, you're doing incredibly well. One thing I wanted to mention was, was that on the website, if you go to GCSE revision and go to foundation, there's the ultimate foundation revision video. That video goes through all the topics on your GCC Foundation course. So, you know, if there's a particular topic you want to do a bit of work on, obviously you've got the video tutorials on Coping Maths, but there's also that ultimate revision video. And I put all the timestamps beneath it. So if you have a look at it, you can find a particular topic and watch that video. And I spent three or four minutes going through every single topic. So it's perhaps not as in detail as these revision videos, but it's just quite useful to give you a bit of a recap on every single topic. So hopefully that ultimate revision video will be useful for you. Also, there's an accompanying booklet. So if you want to spend some time doing some revision for your GCC Foundation exam, it might be a good idea to watch that ultimate revision video, pause it, try the questions in the accompanying booklet, and to go through and do some revision that way as well. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well today. So hopefully you find this video in relative frequency useful. There's five weeks to go. Keep up the hard work and also check out that ultimate revision video. Cheers. Bye.